Welcome to this episode of Wash Talk. I'm your host, Brian Ankney. Today, my guest is John Nyland Jr. from Car Wash Robotics. Welcome, John. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming all the way in from Kansas to be on the show today. Um, I want to get started with just a little bit about you, you know, your career path in life that got you to where you are today uh, with Car Wash Robotics. Sure. Um, yeah, it's exciting times. Um, I grew up in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, and uh, lived there for most of my life. Um, uh, back when I was 16, 17 years old, I was installing marine electronics on boats, yachts, and uh, ships. And, uh, you know, that was when GPS was invented. And, you know, it sounds simple, but back in the day, these autopilots were very advanced. And that, to me, was a, an early indicator of uh, how powerful these autopilots were as a form of robotics, right? Mm -hmm. Because literally, you could put a, a waypoint defined voyage into the chart plotter and push a few buttons, and the boat could take itself hundreds of miles uh, through all these different uh, course changes uh, autonomously, really. And uh, that was exciting, but back 30 years ago, it didn't seem to have a lot of uh, impact in, uh, for most people. But uh, anyway, fast forwarding, um, like I said, spending um, my life in the marine electronics industry, uh, most recently I worked at Garmin uh, Marine Electronics, the GPS company, for eight years. And uh, that was a very, very uh, exciting time. And during that time, we did a, a marine autopilot acquisition for the company. And again, uh, the autopilots, the radar control systems, when they coupled them together, the GPS, um, to me, it's just pure robotics, right? So uh, it was a natural progression. Cool. Well, let's, let's, let's get started with, uh, I think, the million-dollar question. Why in the world would a car wash owner care about industrial robotics? Well, uh, I hate to go right to the money card, but uh, the truth is uh, automation has proven itself for 20, 30 years in automotive manufacturing spaces that, uh, you know, robotics make a difference, right? Because they're repeatable, they're fast, and uh, they bring efficiencies. So uh, in the car wash space, uh, we need to do more with less, right? We want to make, uh, we want to increase our operating income, mm -hmm. we need new growth engines, and we need to be able to offset uh, margin compression through time. Okay. Well, I, I want to, I want to hit a couple different topics. Um, let's, let's talk about you know, each of these things and, and how robotics will affect it. So let's let's start with throughput. How how do robots affect throughput for a car wash? Okay, um, the, the the first iteration of our invention and our, our first generation product is a automated uh, prep uh, solution. Mm -hmm. And that means that we have uh, a robot, basically when you go into the car wash tunnel, uh, you everybody could probably relate to this, you usually we'll see two people standing in, inside the tunnel with a pressure washer on each side of that conveyor. And they're there all day long, and they're at literally prepping the car before it goes to the rest of the tunnel equipment. It's a horrible job. It uses a ridiculous amount of water. It uses uh, way too much energy and way too much soap. So the use case was to use uh, robotics uh, there to automate that process. So uh, we reduced the labor requirement there. Mm -hmm. We reduce water, we reduce soap, and we get uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of the heavy stuff off the car there, and uh, a lot better finished product. You mentioned energy. I mean, energy is is important in every every business, but especially a business where you've got a lot of moving parts. And how 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 does the robot compare to other equipment as far as energy goes? Well, we're using a lot less energy mm -hmm. because we're only uh, turning the pumps on when we actually are going to apply water as opposed to the two pressure washer uh, examples I mentioned to you that are always constantly on. Mm -hmm. So if you think about 60, 80, 120 cars an hour continually coming through, the way it's being done with people is they just have the water on full and the pumps are running on full. So you have 12 hours of electricity running and uh, that's just over the top, right? Whereas ours is only being turned on 15 seconds when the car comes uh, in and it cycles to the front of the car and then it turns off, and then it goes down the left side of the car for uh, another 12 seconds, and then it goes and does the rear of the car for another seven seconds. So when you start to add that up at the end of a cycle, you know, you're 30% you're less energy at least. Wow. Yeah. Now, you, you mentioned the two people that stand there, you know, that stand there to do what the robot will do. And, and as far as labor goes, how does it affect, I mean, for, for a car wash, what, what kind of difference does it make in labor? Well, there's the moving target, for lack of a better example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we all know that uh, a, car, a car wash environment is, is a harsh environment to work in. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, soaps that get atomized in the air, and uh, it's hot, right? And uh, it's a noisy environment. 
So what we our, our business model is based on having uh, one or two robots put in that place. And instead of having two people there to prep the car, we now have one person there making sure that the car gets loaded onto the conveyor properly. And that person is now just managing the robots to make sure that uh, the car doesn't you know, do anything unexpected, like you know, not being on neutral or jump off the rails or something silly. So it's a, it's a whole different uh, environment for the worker. So the, the, th the thinking there is that you're going to have a lot better retainage with workers and it's a better job. Yeah. Well, I mean, in every business in America right now is struggling to find people and keep people and retain people. I mean, it sounds like if you could take two jobs that are, you know, wet, dirty, noisy, <laughs> yeah. you know, hot right. and terrible That's right, and Brian. monotonous as heck. And you could create one job where a person, you know, has a little bit higher skill level, not necessarily in there in the mist. I mean, that sounds like a, a much better job where you'd be able to retain your people better. Absolutely. And you'll be able to attract better people. And um, also keep in mind that most of these car washes are running 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So it's actually two shifts of people. So we're talking about four employees. Wow. You also mentioned water and soap. Uh, it seems like in the car wash space, everything is getting you know compressed. We got to use less water. We got to use less energy. We got to use less soap. And we got to do a better job to keep our customers because there's more competition. And guess what else? We got to do it with less people because we can't hire them. It, you, you, we talked about the labor and we talked about the energy. Uh, let's talk about the water and the soap. Mm-hmm. How, what have you seen and what, like, what, what type of result as far as less water and less soap are you seeing? Okay, again, back to the, uh, the two people standing there at the tunnel entrance with the pressure washers, yep. pressure washer open wide open. Well, whatever that fluid nozzle is putting out, it's 100% of every hour, right, theoretically, for the water and the soap. Whereas, again, the robots, we're using pre precision metering systems so that eight second cycle in the front of the car, the seven second cycle on the left side, the back, that's just a fra it's fractional to that. So you're literally saving um, 30, 40% of soap uh, usage and the water follows that, right? Cool. Let's, let's shift gears. I, I imagine these robots aren't coming from Skynet, <laughs> you know, from the Terminator. <laughs> yeah. where, where, where do these robots come from? Where do, where do you get them? Um, we use FANUC, F-A-N-U-C, FANUC of robots. And FANUC is uh, one of the top two uh, companies in the world that make industrial robots, mm -hmm. and they have for 30 years. And uh, yeah, they, uh, they really are a great uh, company to work with and very supportive. They build uh, a lot of the robots in um, Michigan, right here in the United States. Uh, the, a lot of the other robots are built in Japan, where the company is uh, headquarters is. And they have $16 billion in the bank, and they have robots building robots. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so you're, the robots that you're using for the car wash, they're, they're similar or, or the same as robots that are being used to build cars, to paint cars. Like This is, this is like an off-the-shelf yes. robot. Yes, why, why is that important? Well, I think it's important because uh, you know, it's been proven for 30 years that these industrial robots uh, are robust enough to build these cars. Mm -hmm. And it's a very harsh environment building cars, right? They're bending metal, they're welding, and they're pressing. And uh, the, the interesting part is that what we've done is we've taken something that's been proven for 30 years, like you said, in the automotive manufacturing space, and in our case, the uh, paint application space, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're not just trying to say, hey, we've taken something that can build cars and now we're going to wash car washes with it. No, we're taking something that has evolved over 30 years as a, uh, you know, the premier paint application system to be able to put 14 different colors of paint on a car every 60 seconds, right, as it comes down the assembly line. So now, again, we have precision metering with the uh, paint application. So we take that uh, paint robot and we bring it into the car wash space and we marinize it so that it can uh, survive in the, uh, in, in, in the high humidity environment of the car wash and obviously the uh, car wash soaps. Uh, and basically, we add our software, a control software called Sensor Wash and our sensor payload that we use to fly the robot around the vehicles. Hmm. It's so, a lot less risk, really. Now, you know, because a car wash has so many moving parts and a lot of different systems, you know, and during the, especially during, you know, supply chain issues, you know, it, it was an issue getting, you know, the right part for the right machine. How does buying an off-the-shelf robot, how, how, what's different about that and why, why should that matter to a car wash owner? Okay, that's a great question, Brian. Thank you. Uh, what, I've, uh, what I've really extracted for the four years that I've been in the car wash business myself, because mm -hmm. I bought a car wash tunnel and uh, that's where we developed the use case for the automated prep solution. What I've realized is that uh, the majority, if not all, of the car washing equipment that's out there 
A, it was built in 1970s and engineered in 1970s. So we've got very old technologies here. And now we come along to these industrial robots, right? These are commercially off the, off the shelf available robots, right? That um, they, they have a lot longer service duty. Okay, so that means 10 years of service duty, 100,000 hours with an industrial robot and no bearing changes, just oil changes. Mm -hmm. You go back to what the existing car wash equipment is, these bearings are getting changed out every year. They have to be greased every month. And it's just, I don't think it's a, it's a comparison that you could really make anymore because if you have to order these bearings or parts, every one of these machines is more or less a Picasso, right? Because it's not a standard machine. It's mm -hmm. made by one manufacturer and it varied over time. So for us, it takes a lot of the purchasing and the maintenance issues away right off the table off the bat. Cool. Now, you can't talk about robots and technology of any sort, really, without talking about the future and what's next. Because, you know, we all, we all like to, like, speculate and get excited about, you know, what's coming down the line. You know, like, what's, what's next with robots? Yeah, that's exciting. Um, absolutely. What's next in robots, according to Fanuc, um, uh, is, is, a, is a different type of robot than we have what we're talking about today. Today, we're using industrial robots. They're very fast. They move six feet per second. And uh, moving forward, uh, there will be a transition into a combination of the existing robots that we have, but there'll be a robot that is called a collaborative robot. And the collaborative robot is something that is uh, intended to work much closer with people, meaning that physically you'll be able to take the robot head itself, and let's say you want to clean you know, a wheel, right? You'll take the robot and you'll rotate it 360 degrees around that wheel, and that's actually how you program that robot right there and then. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You, you you mentioned something to me earlier that I that I, I think is super cool, and I know this is this isn't next year, but this is coming um, with with the, the collaborative bots, the cobots. You'd mentioned like the cleaning on the inside of the vehicle. Let's can can you can you just kind of share your vision about that? Sure. I think it's exciting. Sure, thank you. We uh we have the robots cleaning the outside of the car, right? Yep. That's uh, that's the success that we have after two years, and we're selling them, and uh, it, it's exciting and it's real. So now we look at okay, what's the next you know use case, what's the next uh, product roadmap you know, solution, right? Mm -hmm. And that is uh, clearly to us is, uh, is, is vacuuming the inside of the car. Because you know, 80% of the people that come to the car wash, they want the interior vacuumed. And you know, it doesn't sound like much, but if you don't, don't get that customer, that's, that's a lot of customers that go somewhere else. Yeah. So it's hard to find labor again. So um, we don't think it's a real big deal to, uh, to vacuum the car with the robots, especially the cobots, right? And the fact that, you know, these robots have been putting dashboards in these cars uh, and doing all the assembly, right? Very, very, uh, you know, meticulous, uh, dexterous things. So we're, uh, we're serious about that. And, and, and the exterior stuff we talked a little bit about before, I think, the uh, spotting, you know, contamination on the car, right? Mm -hmm. You know, bird droppings, things like that. You know, that's, that's what we're, uh, we expect it to do. You know, I mean, that, it sounds like, you know, where we were talking about how you can save on water, save on energy, save on soap. If, if the robot has the ability to identify the car that comes in that is covered in bird droppings and covered in mud, you know, and spay, pay special attention to that vehicle. But then the next 10 that come through that are pretty darn clean, you know, as opposed to having every, every car that comes through getting the amount of soap, water, and energy that it takes to clean the most dirty car. Now, it, are you, what you're saying is the robot would specialize the wash based upon what is rolling through, like how dirty the car is? Yes, yes. The synthetic vision with these camera systems, AI, you know, if it doesn't make us extinct, extinct like everyone's saying, but uh, <laughs> all kidding aside, the machine vision technologies are there and we've, uh, we've got software running to do these things. And uh, yeah, that's absolutely uh, what we're looking to do because uh, what else can you do? If you can't bring new efficiencies to a market, then you probably don't have a good business use case. But but. Clearly, we want to use uh, whatever we need to do on each car that's specific to that model car, right, for optimal uh, results, not nominal, right? It's yeah. optimal, yeah. Let's, let's talk about getting car wash or getting robots into car washes today. What, what has to happen or what, what needs to happen in order for car wa or robots to get into car washes across the country? Acceptance, mm -hmm. you know, awareness, understanding. Uh, the value proposition, right? Um, you look at the revenue models, you know, there's 25,000 car washes in the United States that run a tunnel, I'm told. That's what our data supports. And what we found is that if you look at the revenue model, okay, let's say a full service car wash does 2.1 million a year in revenues today. 
and their costs are 1.1 million. Our goal, and we've shared this with the robot company when we first started with Emphatic, is that we want to take the $1.1 million in cost and bring that down to 500,000. And that's really the value proposition. Wow, so instead of building another one, you can just make more than twice as much money off of the one that you already have. Absolutely. Well, that's that's a heck of a that's a heck of a case. <laughs> yeah, right. That's it. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it makes sense. So, if a robot lasts ten years, works twelve hours, uses less soap, uses less energy, I mean, it sounds like it sounds like a, like a pretty interesting thing. How you know how how can somebody find out more about about the robots that you're offering? Well, they can call us and they can email us and. Um, get started with us, you know, get on the list, right? Because uh, like all this, the businesses today, uh, post COVID, there's a supply chain drag, like you mentioned earlier yeah. in our conversation. So, um, you know, we're about two months out and uh, this is our second year in the industry as a startup. And uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're looking for a partner in the industry, somebody that can, you know, or, or outside the industry, somebody that recognizes what our proof of concept represents and what our first generation success is and wants to help us get to the market faster because I think the uptake of this, the opportunity for the uptake of this new technology, I think it's it's, it's a very unique time. And I think in three to five years, it'll it'll be a lot less uh, lucrative, right? Yep. Cool. I, I, I thank you for coming today. Is there anything more you'd like to share with our audience before we say goodbye? No, but uh, thank you. And, uh, you know, I would just say em- embrace this because uh, it's happening in all vertical markets. And uh, the exciting thing is it's a, th- there's no downside to this. It's just, uh, it's upside, right? Because you want to keep your customers, right? And uh, we didn't talk about the ecological side of this, but, uh, you know, we all want to use a lot less water in this world, right? Yep, yep. Well, less water, less soap, less energy. I mean, it's yep. that not only does it win in, for your pocketbook, but it, it wins for the world as well, right? That's right. And it's important to our customers. That's right. Thank you for taking the time to watch this episode of Wash Talk. I'm your host, Brian Ankney. Today, my guest has been John Nyland Jr. from Car Wash Robotics. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Brian.